Hi everyone, um, welcome to this lesson where I'll be going over exam questions for upper and the lower bounds. Um, you need to be able to calculate the error intervals, uh, finding the upper limit and the lower limit. If you can't do that, please refer to my previous video uh, where I've gone through that for you. Um, so let's begin. The first question that I have in front of me is a typical exam question uh, where you've been given a, a shape, in this case a rectangle and you've been told that the length and width of this rectangle have been measured to the nearest centimeter. Now, if you'll notice, our actual dimensions for this rectangle are given in meters. So we have to convert them into uh, centimeters so that we can find the upper and lower limits, and then we can convert them back into meters again. Right, so let's begin. Let's have a look at the 3.45. The 3.45, uh, we'll times that by uh, 100, so we get 345 and that's in centimeters. And then we can find the upper and lower limits by drawing our number line. So the next centimeter up is 346 centimeters. And the one before that is 344 centimeters. Now in the middle for both of them, we'll find those values. So we get 344.5 for the lower limit and 345.5 for the upper limit. Now. We did convert them into centimeters, so we're going to divide both these values when we write them back into our error intervals. So what do we have? We have 3.45 is less than 3.455 in meters. All I've done here is convert this by dividing by 100. And for the other side, which is also equal to, um, we have 3.445. So this is the length of our rectangle. We have the maximum value it could be and the minimum value it could be. And we'll do the same thing for the width. So for the width, we have uh, 2.55, which will become 255 in centimeters. Draw a number line on this. So we have 256 centimeters and 254 centimeters. So once again, we'll find the middle values between those points. So for the lower limit, we have 254.5 centimeters. And for the upper limit, we have 255.5 centimeters. So for the width, we have 2.55 is less than 2.555 meters and greater than or equal to 2.545 meters. And that is our error interval for the width. Now what you can do, which does help, is you can draw uh, these values back into your triangle, um, your rectangle, sorry. Um, so let's do that. It just helps uh, you keep an eye on sort of what is what. So let's just copy that. So our two rectangles, um, we can call them our minimum rectangle and our maximum rectangle. What we can do is put in um, for the dimensions our minimum and uh, maximum values or the uh, lower and upper limits, okay? So for the minimum rectangle that we can have, we can have a length of 3.445 and a width of 2.545. And for the maximum, um, it will help us if we can have 3.455 on its own rectangle and 2.555, okay? So that's what we have. So our rectangle, um, our rectangle, um, can be either um, this one on the left hand side or that one on the right hand side. So the first question says to find the maximum and the minimum area. So, and the maximum and minimum uh, perimeter. Um, so for the minimum area. Now for the minimum area, um, we want to multiply these two values. So we have 3.445 times by 2.5. 4, 5, and that gives us, if you do that on your calculator, so that gives us uh, 8.767525 meters squared. And we could, although the question hasn't asked us to do this, uh, we can round it, um, or the examiner might say to you to round it to a particular degree of accuracy. Um, we could have something sensible, so um, perhaps we can have um, 8.8 eight meters squared, where I've rounded it to one decimal place. And we do the same thing for the maximum area. So for the maximum area, 
we have 3.455 times by 2.555 and that gives us, if we can work that out on our calculators, that gives us 8.827525 meters squared. Once again, we can look to round this um, because we've done the other one to one decimal place, we can do the same. So that also gives us 8.8 .8 meters squared. And often actually you will find that an examiner will ask you to compare both your maximum and your minimum values and come to a, an appropriate degree of accuracy. Now we notice that both of these values actually rounded um, to one decimal place and they became the exact same answer. So offering 8.8 .8 as an answer overall that takes into consideration both the maximum and the minimum area is actually a good um, rounding um, to do. So rounding to one decimal place would be ideal in this um, case. Right, let's move on. Let's find the uh, perimeters. So the perimeter, as you are aware, or you should be aware, is the length around the rectangle. Okay, so what we want to do is um, go around and add the two lengths and the two widths. So for the first one, for the uh, minimum perimeter, we have two lots of 3.445 plus two lots of 2.545. And that gives us, we've got this out on a calculator, 11.98 meters using the maximum values once again. So perimeter max okay so we do two lots of 3.455 i've run out of space so i'll just do it underneath here plus two lots of 2.555 so that gives us on our calculators it gives us 12.02 meters now if you had to round these to uh, a suitable degree of accuracy. You could see that if you were to round to one decimal place like earlier, um, it wouldn't round to the same answer. So what can you do? Let's have a look. A good answer would be perhaps to round this um, to 12. 12, so you'd round to two significant figures. It, it, as you can see, um, this value here, if you round it to two significant figures, you get 12. And this value this gives you the same answer. So our next question, um, here we have um, Sufyan ran a 1500 meter race in 260 seconds. The time was calculated to the nearest second and the distance is calculated to the nearest 10 meters. Calculate the maximum and minimum possible values for his average speed. Now, the first thing you will need to know on this question is how to find the speed. You should know that speed is equal to distance divided by time. So we can write down that formula. Um, right here so speed is equal to distance divided by time so we can go back to this question again and uh, look at the distance so the distance we are told is 1500 meters and it has been rounded to the nearest 10 meter so we have to go on either side of 1500 uh, meters so we have 1510 on this side meters and 1490 meters on the other side. Once again, find the middle values between those and we have 1495 meters for the lower limit and 1505 meters for the upper limit. And we can write that in our error interval. So 1505 and 1495. So that's our distance. Now we can do the same thing for time again. So 260 seconds. Now the seconds have been rounded to the nearest second. So that's going to give us 261 on this side and 259 on the lower side. So in between we have 259.5 and 260.5. And let's put that into an error interval. So 260 is less than 260.5 and greater than or equal to 259.5. And that is our time. So 
Going back to the question, it says calculate the maximum and the minimum possible values for his average speed. Now, in order to do this question for of division, it is different to what you did with the previous question where you were just multiplying the maximum length times the maximum width to find the maximum value and um, doing the same thing for the perimeter where you are adding the maximum or the minimum values to find um, the maximum or the minimum perimeter. Uh, when it comes to division, it is slightly different. Why? Some of you may think um, that to find the maximum, you do maximum value divided by maximum value. And to find the minimum, you do minimum value divided by minimum value. Now, this is totally incorrect. And it's a common mistake that students make in the exam. So you've got to be really, really careful. Now, I'm going to explain to you um, why uh, through an analogy. But before we do that, we know that when we divide by a large number, um, our number becomes smaller overall. And when we divide by a small number, the number is bigger. Okay. So imagine you are having a wedding party and you have two types of people. Okay. Um, you have a very generous person and you have a very stingy person. Okay. Now, if you are a generous person, which I hope all of you are, um, and I know you are, Okay, um, then what you're going to do is you are going to want your guests to eat a lot of food. Okay, you want them to be happy. So um, in order to do that, to find the maximum, you are going to do um, maximum food. And you're going to distribute that amongst the minimum amount of guests. Okay, that way you have lots of food and you have very few guests so that the guests can eat again if they wanted to. OK, and they'll be well satisfied. Whereas on the other hand, if you take the um, example of a stingy person, uh, they want to give maybe people the least amount of food. So what they're going to do is, oops, let's get rid of that. What they're going to do is they are going to order minimum food. And they're going to have maximum amount of guests. Right now, what will happen? Those lots of guests. Um, will go up and they'll realize that there's not enough food for everybody. So they won't get enough food. Okay, so that's giving us a minimum. Okay, whereas uh, on the other hand, you have the generous person um, who's ordered lots of food and his guests are fewer. So therefore, everyone gets to eat twice, maybe even three times. Okay, now we are going to apply the same thing to our question. So in order to find the maximum speed, we are going to do Distance divided by time, remember that's a formula. So we're going to find the maximum distance. And we are going to divide this by the minimum time. Likewise, when we are finding the, um, sorry, the minimum speed. We're going to take the example of the stingy person who um, gets the minimum and divides it by the maximum. So in this case, it's going to be minimum distance divided by maximum time. Hope you understood that. Let's now bring the values that we have. So let's choose a different color pen to do this. OK, so for the maximum speed, we are going to get divide this value by the minimum time. So 1505 divided by the minimum time, which was 259.5 and that gives us we can just do that on our calculator and that gives us 5.79961 once again we can look to round that to a um, suitable degree of accuracy so i think 5.8 meters per second is good and that's been rounded to one decimal place and for the minimum we will do the minimum distance divided by the maximum time. So the minimum distance is 1495 and the maximum time is 260.5. So 1495 divided by 260.5. And that on our calculators gives us 5.73896, which again, we can look to round to one decimal place. So that's 5.7 meters per second. So that's one DP. Now, um, 
With the last question, we looked at both answers because sometimes the examiner or the uh, exam board uh, will require you to look at both your answers and come to one answer for both of them by taking into consideration both answers. Now, in order to do that, you have to look at the um, original. Yeah, so let me just highlight that here and here. And you have to look at those answers and you ask yourself, well, what do both of them round to? So if you had to round to a particular given um, amount of um, decimal places or significant figures, what would be ideal? Now, looking at both of them, um, you can see perhaps that they round ideally to one significant figure, giving us six meters per second. So that would be a good answer to give uh, as your final answer. Right, let's move on to our final question. Um, we have here um, a, the curved surface area of a cone is given by the formula A is equal to pi times R times L and we are told that A is the curved surface area, R is the radius of the base of the cone and L is the slant height and it's told us that A has been rounded um, to three significant figures and R has been rounded to one significant figure. Calculate the upper bound for this question. So maybe you could pause the video, uh, try this one yourself and then return back um, and compare your answers. Right, so we are told um, that A has been rounded to uh, three significant figures, so 220. So we'll have 221 on this side and 219 on that side. And in between we have 219.5 and 220.5. And we can do the same for the R value. So for R, we are told that it has been rounded to one significant figure. So that's going to be so that's going to be seven and nine. And in the middle, we have 7.5 for the lower limit and 8.5 for the upper limit. And we can put them into their error intervals as well. Although you're not really required to for this question, you can continue without it, but it's a good practice to have, so 219.5 and 8 is less than 8.5 and greater than or equal to 7.5. So now that we have the um, error intervals, um, we can go back to the question and look to see what to do next. Now it tells us to find the upper bound for L. Currently, um, our formula is in terms of A. So the first thing that we will do is make L the subject by dividing both sides by pi times R. So on this side we get a oops we get a over pi r so this is the formula that we are going to be looking to use so the upper l would be maximum value for a divided by now pi is a constant so that can just go down directly down there so we can have pi times the minimum value for r, okay? Because remember, to find the um, maximum L, we do, and because and we divide in here, we do maximum divided by minimum. So let's do that. So the maximum A is 220, and that will be divided by pi times the minimum r, which is 7.5. Now, if we put that into our calculators, we get... 9.3583 and the answer will be in centimeters because L is a length and the question has values which are in centimeters. Um, once again we want to round this to an appropriate degree of accuracy so a good value to round to would be 9 point uh, perhaps you could do 9.36 or 9.4. Uh, but because we've been doing one decimal places, let's do it to two decimal places. So 9.36 centimeters rounded to two decimal places. I hope you understood this lesson. Um, and if you liked it, please give the video a thumbs up. Um, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel so, so you can be updated and notified as and when new videos are released. Goodbye for now, guys.